Okay, now next up, let's have a look at the touch-up tool that is probably the most popular tool inside Photoshop and arguably made Photoshop a household name. He's called the Clone Stamp Tool. I call him the Rubber Stamp Tool. And this is the tool that'll let you put two heads on your dog or 18 tires on your car, all that kind of crazy, fun, goofy photo manipulation stuff. But what I'm going to do is rather than doing something kind of crazy and goofy, I'll leave that up to you. What I'm going to try and do is I'm actually going to try and use this tool to correct a photo to try and take out some blemishes inside a photo and it's going to be kind of a simple blemish but it'll give you a good example of how this tool works so as always let's double click on the gray background into our project files and go ahead and open up a file called retouch1.jpg Okay, wonderful. I'll hit shift tab on my keyboard to get rid of my palettes over on the right hand side. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on our photo. Of course, it's a photo of a lovely path through the forest. This is actually behind my house, which is kind of fun to take the kids out there. But the path is marked with these sort of spray painted marks on the trees, which is good, I guess, so we won't get lost, but it's kind of it's kind of a blemish on the photo, isn't it? It's kind of a nice photo, except for that, that nasty spray paint there. So what I want to try and do is remove the spray paint as best I can and essentially cover it up with tree bark. And that's what this clone stamp tool or this rubber stamp tool is going to let us do, is essentially clone part of the image on top of another part of the image. So over inside the toolbox, I'm going to go and grab the clone stamp tool or the rubber stamp tool as I lovingly call it. And again, it's a brush based tool so I can use my square bracket keys on my keyboard to increase and decrease the size of the brush. So for something like this white stripe, maybe something a little bit larger, something like that is really what I'm after. Now, here's how it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cursor over top of an area of the image that I want to sample from or that I want to clone from, right? So I want to try and duplicate this area here over top of the white area. So what I'm going to do to indicate to Photoshop that I want to sample this area is I'm going to hold down Option or Alt over on the PC side. And of course, my cursor changes to a target, to a almost like a crosshair there, single click to set back target. And then now as I move my cursor around on my image I get this little preview. You can see I have tree bark inside my cursor now as I move it around and then essentially what I'm going to do is paint with tree bark over top of that white blemish, something like this, right? Now what's really cool is as I'm painting over top of the white blemish, you can see back over the area that I sampled, I have a crosshair there, so it's telling me where I'm copying from. You know, I don't want to get too close to the edge of the tree, otherwise I'll start sampling leaves and things like this. That's no good, right? So I'm just going to undo that. So that's really the idea there. It's really, really straightforward. Let's do this one more time here. I'm just going to move my image down here. Maybe I'll sample from this area here and I'll copy it onto the, the red splotch there, the red splotch paint. So once again, what I'll do is I'll hold down Option or Alt on the PC, single click, and then once again bring my cursor over top of the area that I want to correct. Now you know this could be anything. This could be spray paint on a tree trunk, it could be skin blemishes, it could be cracks on pavement, oil drips, all kinds of stuff, right? Again, you're really only limited by your imagination and the nastiness of some of the photos that you might be trying to clean up. There we go, something like that. I think that looks all right. Now of course the acid test is to zoom out just a little bit and make sure that your image looks decent. You don't want to have any, any trails or any sort of tiling or anything like this. This looks okay, although it does look a little bit patterned there a little bit. I might do a little bit more work on this, but that anyway is the basic idea here in terms of working with the clone stamp tool inside Photoshop.